Hey everyone, how's it going? Hi Ashley, we're excited for you. Um, give me two seconds, I'm going to share this on Facebook and then I will bring you in. This is um, Karen on location today. I am up north of Western Australia, really beautiful um, area, but hopefully my reception works okay. Can you guys hear me okay? If you can, can you let me know in the chat? Just put hi, where you from? Let me know you can hear me. That would be amazing. And then I will just get this um, live on Facebook so that everyone can jump on and join us. Can you guys hear me okay? Just um, yeah, just let me know in the chat if I'm coming through clear, if my sound's working. I just want to double check it all. Yes, Helen, thank you. <laughs> hello, hello, and welcome to the show. Um, okay, we're setting up the webinar live. Because I am so remote, the north of Western Australia is a really remote, remote region. It's beautiful, but it's also, uh, you know, has, has um, uh, the internet isn't as good as it is in the city, let's say. I wish that I could, um, I wonder if, yeah, maybe at the end I will, um, I'll try and show you outside. I'd love to show you my view. Or I'll put on the Facebook group if you guys want to see. Has anybody been to the outback of Australia? Let me know. Pro probably not. It's it's pretty remote out here, but it's very beautiful. Um, okay. I can't do any international traveling at the moment, so I've got to stick to uh, stick to what I can do in my own country. Uh, Helen, your sister lives in Sydney. You're in New Jersey. Okay. Awesome. Have you been to visit her? Helen, have you come out to Sydney? Let me know. Um, awesome. Okay, so I think we're live on Facebook. We've just waited a couple of seconds. Oh, Dr. Bart is here. I think um, that's another great shirt. I think actually we, we should make Health Made Simple shirts. Can we make a health made simple shirt? Definitely can. We absolutely. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes Whitney. Who wants one of those? Let us know in the chat. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to bring Ashley in here. Uh, yeah, and then uh, and then we can get started. We we are live on Facebook, so we'll get Ashley in, and then we can then we can dive in. Ashley, yay! Good to see you. Yeah. Yes, we can we can hear you and see you. Thanks for jumping on with us. Of course. I love talking about all things related to health and trying to make it simple for people. Yes, you've been so they we've updated you. That's what we like to do here. <laughs> well, we forget we have our own lingo and that's confusing to people. Yeah, right on. Well, welcome to being here tonight. And you're on the West Coast, is that right? Yes, I'm in Malibu, or so outside of LA. Nice. Well, we're down. I'm. I'm. So we've we've got it all covered. Obviously, Karen's over in Australia. I'm down here in the uh, the best part of the country in Florida, which is awesome. So uh, <laughs> we've got all the beach, beach, awesome beach locations covered, right? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Great. Let's um. Let's get started. Shall we? Good. Yeah. Awesome. Well, welcome back everybody to another episode of the Health Made Simple show. We are excited. Tonight we've got a special guest, but before I introduce her, I want to introduce our host, Dr. Bart Precourt, who has been a healthcare provider for over 20 years, practicing a range of modalities, including chiropractic, acupuncture, kinesiology, nutrition and supplementation, and functional testing out of his clinic, Balance Health Studio in Seagrove Beach, Florida. 
He's also the founder of the Health Edge program, which is a virtual health program for entrepreneurs and executives wanting to take their health to the next level. So he's worked with uh, thousands of people all around the world, including uh, celebrities and athletes. And so we are always excited to have him make health simple for us. And tonight we are super excited as well. I know I'm just saying excited so many times because I'm always so excited about the topics we get to talk about. I learn something every time, but we have Dr. Ashley on, which is, Dr. Ashley Beckman is a doctor of Chinese medicine and acupuncture and a board certified acupuncturist and herbalist um, in LA who currently practices functional medicine virtually in Malibu. Uh, she also received her doctorate in healthy aging and longevity and wrote her thesis on epigenetics, which mm. is the study of how our genes are affected by our diet and lifestyle. She believes that one of our biggest myths in the health and wellness is that there is a one size fits all approach to healing and achieving optimal health. And that could not be further from the truth. The first step for you is to reclaim, to reclaim your vitality is to understand your unique challenges by properly and holistically assessing you, your current state of health and what you need so that you can optimize your health by balancing your hormones, reducing chronic stress, detoxifying the body, addressing fertility issues and managing pain successfully. She also co-founded Golden Path Alchemy, which was an organic skincare company based on the principles of traditional Chinese medicine. So that's why we are so excited to dive into personal care products and makeup and all that stuff. Uh, Dr. Bart and I touch on it sometimes that it's important, but we, we really wanted to get an expert here to dive into what we need to look at and look for. So thank you so much for being on the show. Of course, happy to be here. Dr. Ashley, um, thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Um, we, um, this is a topic that, you know, each week Karen and I have a talk, you know, a, a topic and every week we, we always, it always comes up toxins, yeah. how many different ways that they're coming into our body. And I think the obvious one that we're always talking about as practitioners is food, right? So we know that we're directly putting food into our body and yet, man, equally as important and often overlooked, not even often, overlooked, I, I overlook it at my own house, um, is the chemicals, the toxins that are in our environment, you know, the cleaning agents we use, and especially a lot of women and, and our guys too, but put the lotions and makeup we put on our bodies, all of that stuff. So thank you for being here tonight. We've been pushing this topic down the road a little bit, and I'm glad that we have an opportunity to dive in a little bit deeper. And, you know, I think um, you and I, we even without knowing each other, just knowing that you're doing functional medicine, we're always trying to dive a little bit deeper, trying to get to the root causes so our bodies can just function better. So thank you for being here tonight. I'm looking forward to diving in pretty deep here. Great. Yeah, I love this topic too, because as you touched on, environmental toxins can be one of the root causes. And so this is something that actually, when actually everyone has control of and you, can, you pick what you put on your skin. So it's really good to be educated about this and at least remove some of the things that we have control over. So how, so what, um, you know, this is kind of like a unique topic because, you know, the obvious topic is food, right? That, that's, that's the easy one, food and exercise. And I'm sure you, you know, do that as well. But so how do you, tell me a little about you. How did you get involved in, you know, kind of expertising in this area? Um, took a little background for our audience tonight. Sure. So um, it actually started with a book in right after I graduated college. So this was about 20 years ago. I read a book called Drop Dead Gorgeous, and it started listing all the chemicals that were in typical skincare. And, and then that's where I kind of found out that basically, you know, the average person uses about 12 to 20 chemicals or, pro or sorry, products per day. And then that usually is the result of about 200 chemicals per day that you're putting on your skin. So, you know, women obviously use a bit more, uh, quite a bit more, but it's really important because, you know, guys also, they don't really maybe dive as deep into learning all the different chemicals and reading about the things, you know, they just kind of assume that the products they're using are safe. And that's the thing actually with everybody. Everyone assumes if it's sold in the United States or wherever that it's actually safe and not harmful. And that's very, very far from the truth. Many of these chemicals are actually carcinogenic and only 11% out of the about 11,000 ingredients are actually tested. And Europe bans over a thousand of them. And we ban, I'm sure the number's gone up a little bit, but about 10 to 15. 
Yeah. Yeah. And now, which is when we think about that, it's mind boggling. And you said they're, you know, they're carcinogenic and never mind. And maybe we'll dive a little bit into this, just how many of them are endocrine disruptors. Yeah. And that's the big thing. That's how I got into this is, um, you know, a lot of women have issues with either fertility, fibroids, cysts, things like that. And you don't really realize that, you know, the perfume you're using has, is, is disrupting your hormone system or the makeup is doing that, or there's lead and lipstick. There's just all these different things. And people think, oh, that's not a big deal. But the average woman, I think, consumes about 12 pounds of lipstick over their lifetime. So you just think, oh, it's not a big deal. But when there's actual lead in there that should be banned, it is a big deal. Yeah, absolutely. I think I know every time I do a deep dive into any particular product, and it happens all the time, um, I'm always blown away by what's in there, what we just kind of let pass by. Uh, one of my favorite ones, you know, so I still have um, a brick and mortar practice when people come in and empty their pockets. <laughs> oh, you, know. you get to see what's in there. Yeah, yeah. And it like, sometimes it's so innocent, like to pull out literally a thing of chapstick. Right chapstick you're talking about you know like um makeup stick and stuff one of the very first ingredients in chapstick is petroleum yeah you know talk about an endocrine disruptor you know and maybe for the audience we'll, we'll just back up a step and, and help everyone understand when we put something on our body like in our skin our eyes our lips every especially those things that are so porous and they're so they absorb things so well everything goes right to the liver right into the bloodstream so some of this gets there with a freer pass than if we eat it. Right. It, it, so tell me a little about that. I'm guessing that that's, you've crossed that bridge before. Tell me about those chemicals because I think that's a big misunderstanding for people. They think, well, no big deal. I eat organic. So we even have like an organic cafe, but we're at the beach and we see people lather up in you know, all these different, you know, sunscreen lotions and stuff like that. Talk about how easy, if you would, it is for these chemicals to go literally from on the body deep into that on that cellular level. Well, yeah. And, and that, and especially too, you know, people are using those spray sunscreens. So that's even worse now that they have <laughs> the aerosol and things like that. But yeah, when you put something directly on the skin, you absorb 60 to 80%, and it usually bypasses the liver and the kidneys, so it goes straight to the blood, which is extra toxic because, like you're saying, you're not even going through the digestive system and getting filtered out because so many things, it just, it gets diluted. And what it is, too, is, you know, a lot of these studies that are done, basically, is that these are Horm these are chemicals that even in minute amounts cause problems. And so people think, oh, it's not a big deal. There's just a little bit in there, but they really don't realize the cumulative effect. Mm -hmm. And again, that actually these are minute amounts that cause big problems. And as you know, people have all types of symptoms and they don't really equate that those symptoms, you know, they normalize it like headaches are normal, PMS is normal. Really, it's normal to have fibroids because 35% of women have them. But those aren't normal things. Those are signs showing us that something's wrong. And a lot of times people just don't really connect what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis with that. And as you know, you know, we look at people's daily habits. So we want to know those little things add up. But you know, people are very married to their skincare routine if you talk to women. They have their favorite makeup, their favorite lipstick, and they they know it's toxic and they usually don't want to switch. Right, Karen? You're, you're laughing. <laughs> oh, 100%. <laughs> you know, you hear these things all the time and they just say, oh, but you know, oh, I need, but you know, I have to wear XYZ lipstick. It's been my favorite since I was a kid, not a kid, but you know, in my 20s. And a lot of those big brands are the ones that are the most toxic. And really, it's shocking that everyone believes that they're not because they really think that these companies wouldn't have anything in there that would be harmful. Yeah, you know, you said several things there. Um, one, the idea that a small, a small amounts don't affect us. Yeah. And the difference, I, and I didn't know it's that high, 60 to 80% goes, you know, direct, directly into the bloodstream. I didn't even know it's that high. The big difference is, the, again, for our listeners, that when we eat food, we have a defense mechanism. You know, right. we have, you know, stomach acids, we have bile, 
you know, from the gallbladder and the liver and that uh, like lubricates even these toxins and sends it out. We have fiber that picks up toxins and delivers them out. But when it goes directly on the skin or we're putting it someplace and absorbed into the bloodstream, that's a whole different game. And those little itty bitty particles, sometimes those can be more dangerous because they don't get picked up by the immune system. So, you know, that's a great point there. Sometimes we think that they're so small, but to your point, that day-to-day -day awareness, that day-to-day, -day, you know, reaction. I, I want to give you a quick story and you probably have a thousand like this as well. <laughs> Young lady, super healthy, challenges. She has a longstanding Hashimoto's issue and yeah. we've diet up all this stuff rock solid and like a better habit health habits and better you know lifestyle than most because she's dealt with this Hashimoto's young girl in her, in her, her late 20s and then all of a sudden she gets her labs and we're looking at them and her Hashimoto's is spiked and she we can't think of anything that's done anything different until the very thing she puts that stuff on top of my countertop and we see it wasn't chapstick it was a type of lipstick lick balm something in there yeah that one product spiked her her antibodies her autoimmune condition it spiked it off the charts completely threw her off to the point where anxiety came back all these things because of the chemicals that she was i don't put stuff on my lips but when i watch people who do they do it all day long right yeah so literally you know application after application that one thing spiked their anxiety, spiked their autoimmune, spiked their Hashimoto's. It was, it was a, it was a mind boggling moment for me to say, man, those chemicals, those micro, you know, those itty bitty nanoparticles over and over again can really set entire the physiology, especially in the endocrine system and can throw it way off. Yeah, no, it's, it's crazy too. And that's one thing that's great is, you know, we have all these different labs where you can test these things. Um, and that's one thing that I love doing. And again, with the epigenetics background, that is another way I kind of got interested in this is because um, I am one of those people, you know, for the last 20 years, everything's super clean. I got crazy about only having things in glass, only even skincare in glass. I won't buy anything in plastic that's skincare either um, because the plastic gets into the product. And um, I happen to be one of the people who you just on the labs, things just affect me more that, you know, you don't, some people don't clear toxins as well. And some of that can come back down to the genetics. And so I found that super interesting because, you know, you could have maybe someone like, I'll just use you, you clear things well, not as big of a deal. You know, maybe that product doesn't bother you as much, but then over 20, 30 years, it could turn into something. But then you have other people who you know, they get headaches when they walk by a Sephora or a laundry, you know, detergent aisle, things like that. And those are the people that these things really affect them even faster. And I find those are the ones that have the thyroid issues, autoimmune thyroid, you know, um, fibroid, cyst, endo, endometriosis, things like that. And people, again, like you're saying, you doctors in general don't really equate, you know, all these aspects of life. Um, that people and their practices with the skincare, with, you know, people in their, you know, silly Nalgene bottles, which drive me crazy because it's just still plastic, but they're convinced it's safe because it just doesn't have BPA, where, you know, we have to educate people that all plastic is not good. And there's still all of those endocrine disrupting chemicals, even in the safe plastics, because there's really no safe plastic. So, you know, these things, those stories, I'm sure you have many more and it's that little amount of something even in a small chapstick and that's probably one ingredient in there but for example fragrance can hold up to 200 ingredients in it and none of them are reported on the label so that's a big thing and everyone kind of sees you know fragrance in a lot of things and they think oh it's not that big of a deal it's one of the last ingredients but that's like having 200 ingredients right there you know, let's let's talk about that for a moment about the non the non reported stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, constantly we hear about oh, there could be hormones in it, but it's not like people will pick up uh, you know something and be like, oh, look, well, there's no hormones in here, <laughs> right? So they think you know, and understandably, because that's how we're looking at our food. That's the training that takes place. So we go, oh, it's talk to us a little bit about that because i think it's an eye-opener when i started learning about this stuff and again you know as a guy it hasn't 
it, it wasn't always as important because I don't put a lot on my body. My wife brings stuff in and then, <laughs> and she too, glass bottles only for drinking, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Yet, so I assume that if it's in my house, I can put it on my body or I can eat it. That's that's the other way. She tells me to stop eating the lotions, but I don't know. Whatever. Uh, so talk to me a little bit about the things that can be in there that's completely legal to have products in there that don't have to be on the label. Because I think this is a huge, like, I, I don't know many people really understand this. Well, and that's, that's basically a lot of what it is, is there's all these different chemicals that are just hidden and... Um, and they fall under umbre an umbrella. So the biggest one is perfume and fragrance. So all of these, they have a lot of different chemicals. There can be phthalates, there can be, sometimes there's formaldehyde. There's so many horrible chemicals. And if they're in a finished product and that finished product is put into the product, then they're, they're kind of saved in that regard. And so a lot of times, you know, the best thing we really can do is tell people to flip it over and just try to look at it, you know, be a little bit familiar with um, some of the terms and things to look for. But at the same time, you know, there are going to be some hidden things. And that's why you kind of need to go with brands that you like, brands you trust. Um, and again, you know, there's something called greenwashing, which is basically when someone puts organic, natural, um, and you know, made from plants, things like that, vegan, um, these things go on the label and people then assume it's safe. So there's all of these, or again, you know, there's all these people that are against animal testing, which I 100% agree with, but just because something isn't tested on animals, it doesn't mean that it's safe. And so a lot of times people put those two together and they have nothing to do with each other. Mm -hmm. Uh, and again, just a reminder for our audience, if you guys have questions, um, put them down, if you're on here on Zoom, just type them in the chat box. And if you're on Facebook, you can ask as well. And then we'll get those questions in just a moment here. So, uh, you know, hormones is a big one. That, that was an eye opener for me years ago. Um, and like you would do a lot of lab testing and I would test people and I'd be like, oh, so you're on HRT because I'll see these high levels. <laughs> like, no, I'm not. Like, well, yeah. sure, because you can't get these levels without being on it. And then we'll do an analysis of just different makeups and, and whatnot. And again, I'm no expert in makeups. And really just came down to, if we didn't know exactly what was in there, we just started scratching them off the list. And what we found is pretty much all the major brands out there, even almost, almost as much doc that, and, and maybe you can kind of lead, you know, lean into this as well. A lot of the ones that were saying the things we wanted to hear, whether it be the taste talent that makes our teeth whiter um, or the ones that made our skin softer and 10 years younger and all those, those were usually the ones that were the most guilty. Would, would you agree with some of that? Yeah. And also the ones, you know, it's like the big brands, it says like, you know, Neutrogena Organics. It's like, no, that's not, you know, they just put exactly what they need to do for their requirements, but you could just put, it's a very small percentage of herbs needed or extracts needed, and then something can be considered natural, but people don't know the difference between natural and organic and then a certified organic and then you know the percentages really so they really put the minimal amount to sort of trick and confuse the customer which is that greenwashing all right so with that being said in a moment here i want to dive in i'm hoping you can help us navigate that road because i get it is it is a challenge you know and in, we don't you know, I, I don't think everyone's going to become an expert in reading labels or do I want them to spend, you know, most of their life in a grocery store flipping every package upside down. Uh, so maybe you can point us in the direction of some specifics to kind of shortcut things. Um, you know, but I think the other thing is, you know, going back to it, and I love the fact that you have a background in epigenetics um, and just kind of remind the audience, you know, the, the epigenetics is really the, 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 the father of science moving forward in healthcare, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. It is because it's looking at, what are we doing as a lifestyle? What are we doing, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis and the awareness of it? Because we obviously we have genes, some genes better than others, but ultimately the expression of those genes is going to come down to what are we doing with our lifestyles? Um, and this hidden little fact that chemicals could be coming into our life on a regular basis without knowing it very, very innocently. I know some women might not, might not give up their makeup, but I also believe that most people now if you got enough pain, you'll like, you'll go in any direction, you know, skin allergies, psoriasis, eczemas, 
you know, migraine headaches, uh, up, you know, like literally gut issues, all of this stuff can lead its, its way back, you know, back to these different types of chemicals in here. And I think the chemical load, I always think as a practitioner, I feel like we're on a race, quite frankly, yeah. we're, we're in a race, especially once you're like no longer 20 is what I like to say. You're in a race that you've taken in all these chemicals through the course of your life, just innocently. You didn't know. You were cleaning with cleaning agents, detergents, you name it. And then you wake up one day and be like, man, I don't physically feel where I want to feel. And you start to clean up your life. And a lot of these efforts are helpful. And then some of them, sometimes they don't feel like they're adding up fast enough. And that's where I feel like we're in a race to stop the insult of chemicals coming in as we're getting them out as fast as can be. Um, you know, and I think, in, and if you want to add a little bit of that, this, this compounding effect, it doesn't have to be like one overload, but this compounding effect of chemicals coming in. Well, yeah. And that's the thing too, is, you know, if we could, we have that kind of body burden bucket that just keeps getting more full and filled every day, basically. And there's only so much we can do to empty it and drain that, but it takes very specific things. And, you know, basically seeing a practitioner, I would say to get those out in a systemic fashion based on each individual person too, because everyone, as we know, I'm sure you have lots of patients and they'll just say, oh, I did a seven day juice cleanse from, you know, the juice shop and I'm good. I've detoxed for the year. And, you know, those things aren't gonna do much at all, really. And so, you know, people, I just don't think realize the severity of what they're dealing with. And even though it's really common, you know, one in three people get some type of cancer. And as we know about 90% of that is related to some sort of environmental, either assault or toxin, or again, your emotions and things like that. But the, you know, the genes are a very small percentage of that. And it is our day-to-day -day habits that turn that expression on or off. So we have a lot of control here and that's our job kind of to educate people so that they have better choices and so that at least their day-to-day -day life is not as toxin-free as possible because it's pretty impossible to do that at this point. But, you know, we really need to help guide people on the best options and um, get these things out of their system that are already there because it's one of the, you know, main root causes of, of a lot of these chronic issues that people have. But the thing is, is, if it was just one thing, like if someone just had environmental toxins, it wouldn't be so hard, but it's the environmental toxins with the viruses, with maybe mold exposure. There's, you know, it's, it's always multi, multi layers. So this is a big piece. And again, why I stress this to people is because they have a choice here. And this is something, you know, you're actually putting your money and investing in products. You want them clean and healthy and not actually harmful that you need to detox from. So in a moment, I want to go through, maybe you can help us, like, let's go through some skincare products. Let's go through some detergents. Let's go through some cleaning products in just a moment. But I want to back up to that, what, what, we, what we were just kind of saying there, where, um, you know, this, this you're, you're absolutely right. And I think this is important for everyone to hear this part of it, that you can't avoid the toxins. They're everywhere. Yeah. Like, they're everywhere. Like, you, you know, heck, around here, there's a lot of like lawn care products and people are like, you know, everywhere. There, the, there's so many chemicals everywhere. So instead of being like, oh, boo-hoo me, I can't, you know, like I'm, I'm doomed. That's not the idea. Yeah. The idea would be then how do you become like this like live vibrant detoxing machine? <laughs> and really a machine that yeah. we go and so you know I love the saying uh, I've heard it for years you know you got to clean the cell to get well like you just mm -hmm. we've got to clean which means it's you're always in cleaning which is interesting because you talked about like a seven day here and we do cleanses and we love them we and it sets the stage for that next level but the idea is that you wouldn't clean your house once a year right right you wouldn't just clean it in January like you clean it every day and I think if we adopt that, and I think, you know, quite frankly, I know that our tribe here in the audience, most of the people listening to, they're right on board. They're like, I get it. Like, how do I get cleaner? You know, more fiber on my body, clean my diet up, you know, do a little fasting and all of those tools are great. So let's shift gears a little bit. Let's, let's get specific so our folks can walk away with some like, some cool stuff. Like literally when they get done today, like how do they exchange? I don't know. They're like, I'm almost embarrassed, but I'm going to do this. So I was looking around for like a cleaner in my house. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to show it. My wife's going to yell at me, but I'm going to show it. So um, should I not show it? Cause it's a brand. Well, I'll no, just put 
Totally. It's okay because you know what? I can talk about that one because you know sometimes we also we make exceptions, right? And that's one that I do use sometimes. Okay. But it has fragrance, and it's a it get again one of the ones that is not as great. It could be a lot cleaner. But again, you know, I don't have and I haven't for 10 plus years, probably more, have had any traditional cleaners in the house. Yeah. But, you know, Mrs. Myers, if you can say it, that one, um, you know, they, they're a middle of the road brand, right? And so that happens with skincare. It happens with the cleaning is actually a lot harder to get the really, really pure, pure brands. Yeah. So it's what, what was interesting is, um, you know, I was this brand and uh, and I agree in the middle of the road, we've been using them for years and I've often recommended my patients when they go because they're at the local yeah. store and they do use a they're lot using of like Tide and Downy and you know, whatever. And so, it, this is, it has, uh, you know, sweeps out a whole lot of those chemicals. Yeah. So there's, there's something on there that I, I never saw and I looked at it and it's the PEG. Yeah. Is it, so for everyone listening tonight, if you flip over a bottle and you see PEG, I forget the, what it actually stands for. It just ra- it should raise your eyebrows be like, uh-oh. And I know PEG is something that affects the respiratory system. So if you're that person and when you spray bottles, like those chemicals don't feel right for you, most likely it's because that's the kind of stuff that has in it. So maybe you can, instead of just a middle of the road option, do you have some suggestions? Let's, and let's start with um, household cleaners. What, what would you, you know, if, if you're telling me, hey, doc, tell all your patients to get these as household cleaners, what direction would we go in? So, I mean, there are a few new brands that I actually have not tried yet, but they're ones where basically, I think they're very condensed and compressed cleaners. I still normally use kind of essential oils, vinegar, um, you know, lemon essential oil is one of my absolute favorites because it also will dissolve all kinds of um, kind of like a natural goo gone if you've ever had to use something like that so it gets anything off so if you have kids and you have those dry erase markers you need to clean everything so just think of that it'll get everything off um you know baking i use a lot of baking soda you know people use scouring powder it's basically based baking soda with um lavender or lemon essential oil in there so vinegar um again there are some detergents there's I think it's called rock and green soap is a really good one. Um, there's, there's, again, I'm, I'm always trying to look and see, but that's what happens. So sometimes a company of you use that have been sort of middle of the road, they might change their packaging or get bought up. And then you'll see these other things sneak in. And so you kind of always have to keep looking. I know it's a pain, but um, you know, these things change quite a bit because these amazing little brands, they do get bought up by huge companies. And then a lot of the quality kind of, not quality, but the um, purity goes down. Yeah, you know, that's, and that's a, a sad truth and it's okay. That's, you know, that's the idea of a lot of these companies, their dream comes yeah. true. They get bought up and the next people that buy them say, well, we could probably do it a little less, you know, cheaper this way, or they could get right. a better shelf life out of this or be a little, whatever it may be. And then they change some of the things. We've seen that in the food industry forever. Um, you know, and it's, and it's okay. And I think that's, you're absolutely right. You got to stay on your toes when it comes to those things, because, you know, um, probably dating myself, but you guys get like the cliff bar, the cliff bar when the food, yeah. when it first came out, it was great. Was healthy. Yeah. Super healthy bar. And then, and then it changed hands in a little bit. So those things certainly happen. <laughs> Some cleaners good. So let, let's let's talk about, and I think sometimes people dismiss how important detergents are, or maybe not important because yes, they're important to get our body clean, like our clothes clean. But the impact of putting every day something on your body oh, right. mm-hmm. cleaned via chemicals. This is an area that I've seen huge. I've seen huge in toddlers and in infants. And we just, we just bypasses us. Um, maybe just get a comment or two about that or dive deep there if you want. And so this is, again, this is another big company that I would say is semi middle of the road, but most people, if they have kids have heard of honest company, right? So they have cleaners, they have detergents, they hold a whole lot of things. Um, and so I think that they do have, you know, a lot of options for people that are again, sort of entering into this world from the traditional items. Are there cleaner options? Yes, but they have detergent, they have all kinds of kids things, they have wipes. 
Seventh generation is still, um, you know, pretty good too. They have a lot of clean items for a lot of, um, oh yeah, they make my favorite disinfecting wipes. Sorry, they use thyme essential oil and that's, those things are the best. So I love that. Um, if there are some people too that maybe use essential oils and some of those companies have some cleaning products that are good, um, not cleaning products, but oils that can be used to clean. And so I like those, but again, so for detergents, people don't also realize that when often a very traditional detergent says non-fragrance, it uses a chemical to be non-fragrance scented. And that's still is very commonly a reaction for little babies and kids, you know, for the people who get hives and things like that. You're, it's not a good idea to go with the, you know, non-fragrance one. You actually should find one that is way more pure because people, again, they don't know what exactly they're reacting to, but you know, if you're using those traditional things, but they made, I think it was called Dreft, which is one that supposedly is, you know, clean for little kids and mm -hmm. there's so, so many toxins in it, you know, and it defeats the whole purpose, in my opinion. Yeah. You know, and, and again, for the listeners listening, you know, wondering like, what are these toxic toxins do? Um, I, I can tell you firsthand in, in clinic, I've seen changing detergents make little kids' asthmas go away. I've yeah. seen hives go away. I've seen literally bad respiratory issues go away with changing the sheets, the detergents that they're putting their head on every night, their pillows. Think about this. When, if there's a chemical that is in your detergent that your body doesn't like, you don't escape it. And it's eight hours of sleeping all night or you're wearing it all day. I mean, anybody knows that kind of when it, you can smell people in their detergents, I would say, or I can, because I'm so sensitive to it. But you, you know, you know, um, it's, it just is permeated in their clothes too. Yeah. And then, and then there's some that are even more offenders like the, um, oh, the dryer sheets, those, those guys. Yes. Yeah. So there's, there's an alternative. Well, first of all, to me, I don't see the point in using them, honestly, anything, <laughs> but they do make wool dryer balls if you need that. But to me, that's, again, this is something you know, there's, there's a product for everything. Some of these things, it's good to get more simple and just go back to basics. You know, people buy, you know, I growing up, there was pledge, which people used on everything. Just use some oil. You know, there's certain ones you can look it up that are better for the wood, but you don't need to have all of these different things like a glass cleaner and then a multi-surface cleaner and a bathroom cleaner and then wipes and then you know, this type of detergent and then dryer sheets. It's, I just feel like it's, there's so much marketing involved that if we also get back to simplicity and the same with your skincare routine, you know, you don't need all of those things. So um, not that it's a really big topic for me, but how about lipstick? What, um, what, what do you reckon? You know, most women wear, a lot of women, I guess, wear lipstick, right? And yes, you know, have some. <laughs> So, so what is, what is, how, where do they go there? Because, you know, I know that's like, I, I, I go through these stores and I see like, there's like 80 lipsticks. I'm like, how do you, how do you, why do we need 80 lipsticks? Like, I don't even get it. So it's a big world. Oh, you're talking about the variety. Well, all of it like that. I'm just almost blown away. Like there's so many different colors, but that's, you know, I'm just a knucklehead. I'm just a guy. Right. So like, I think, oh, it's chemical. Just get rid of it. But I know that that is, you know, a, a big thing for a lot of women. How do they find something healthy to put on a type of skin that is so, so porous and that's going boom right into the bloodstream? What, what, what direction can we lean them into? Yeah, sure. So first of all, I'd say most, unless you're at a very natural beauty store, you're not going to find this thing off the shelf somewhere, pretty much. You know, there's a, there's Los Angeles is huge and very much into this market. There's about two beauty stores that I would ever even recommend. So, you know, a lot of places are that way. There might be one, um, you know, a very big popular one is called Beauty Counter that has tried to kind of come in and then, you know, more available for people, but mostly all these things are online. So another one of my favorite, favorite brands is called Ilia. They have amazing lipstick. Um, so I would say you have to kind of go online. We do have some stores here in LA and, you know, a lot of big cities do. I would say you probably have one natural beauty store right in if you're in a kind of like a bigger city that's um into this a little bit and the same with um that you probably just need to go online and you know like i said there's online stores that carry lots of brands 
And then there are certain ones where you can just get each individual. But again, the Honest Company is expanded into makeup. Um, Beauty Counter, that's one of their flagships is makeup. Jane Iredale is a brand that has been around a very long time and they have pretty full makeup. Um, again, there's always lines that are cleaner, but there's a wide variety. And if you're trying to get someone off, you know, Mac and Dior and all of those very toxic ones, there's, there's different levels, right? Mm -hmm. um, but most of the time you can just pop into a store and, and buy these things. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I totally get that. And because it's not the, you know, the, the general population isn't looking for that quite yet. The beauty is that that niche, it is definitely getting bigger. It's stronger, more and more people are becoming more and more aware. And that's happening because there's more and more toxins everywhere we go. So it's, you know, it's happening. So we have, um, we have a remedy for um, sunscreen protection, but it's different than most people think. Like we're literally helping the skin get stronger. We use a very specific, like uh, full, like a full enzyme, vitamin C, a little bit of vitamin F, and then a little bit of calcium lactate and feed the skin a little bit stronger so it can defend itself. And that's the idea. And then of course, not to get too much sun. So I would, and I say that because sometimes we have to think a little bit outside the box, like using essential oils. Um, yeah. I've made the mistake of using essential oils on my floor and it can oh. get free. Yes. Because a bunch, if you haven't noticed, I get a bunch of dogs. You guys can't even see, but I get a pair of with me. Yes. So I love Frenchies and Bulldogs. So cute. So we got our crew with here and uh, you know, and these guys too, they're no different than that they're, they're so sensitive to chemicals. So next week, by the way, everyone, our first dog show is happening. So next week I got a special guest and we're going to do an episode all on dog food and making sure that these little critters are good and healthy. Um, so yeah, so let, all right, so let's let's keep moving forward here. And there's there's other things. I don't know if we want to go this deep, but like sulfates and parabens, like, and I think those are. Are there any like, if you threw four or five labels out of things that you really want to kind of watch for? And I, I mentioned PEG on the back of a label. Are there any other things that you think of that you want to look for? Like in food, I say, man, you see canola oil run. Right. So are there any, are there, are there any other things that are like that, that, you know, again, as they're just starting to navigate their chemicals or your detergents, is there any certain ones that you think, man, you got to stay away from that one? Well, um, I think fragrance is a big one. Um, just because if you're someone who gets migraines, headaches, any sort of skin, lung issues, that's a big one. Unfortunately, that's going to cancel out a whole lot of products because, you know, even people who, you know, I won't name the brand, but it's very common bath salt one, you know, then it's, it has fragrance and, and mm -hmm. perfume, things like that. So there are a lot of ones, you know, the propylene glycols, those are often contaminated with carcinogens, um, phthalates, possible carcinogen, you know, a lot of these things, mm -hmm. they definitely disrupt the hormones, but a lot of them actually are carcinogenic and have been proven to be. So you know, another one that's actually just so gross to me is that there can be formaldehyde in products. And, you know, these things aren't always listed, but sometimes they are, you know, they, I don't remember how many years ago now, but formaldehyde was in the um, Johnson and Johnson baby shampoo. Yeah. I remember that. You know, oh. it's just, it, and that's the thing is, is like people just really don't, or they really believe the companies have their best interests at heart. And they don't, you know, these, these chemicals, often they're byproducts of other things or just preservatives to make something last on a shelf for five years. And, you know, that's, you just don't want something that can be that stable in your body. And again, when we know that it takes so long to get out, it's just not, not healthy. You, you know, an interesting thing is that, um, you know, as consumers, we're often drawn to color and they use dyes in everything. Oh, yes. Because yeah. it's, you know, it triggers an emotion. Like I want that. If you put purple in something, kids want it, right? So dyes, you know, and especially as, so my background is chiropractic and acupuncture that no doubt about it, there's a direct correlation to the amount of dyes that we consume in central nervous system disruption. Um, and it's because it's exactly what it does. It gets into the nervous system, up into the brain. And again, once we get all that junk up into the brain, we're, you know, we're, that's a whole nother level of detox that has to take place. Yeah. So I always think about the dyes that, that are in things or just if they're, if they're sexy on the shelf, like if they're catching our eye, right. like, 
you know, like if it's a cool color or something like that, like we almost have to step back and watch that emotional buy, watch that emotional decision and say, it can look boring because it's really a boring thing I'm using it for. I'm using it to clean. I'm using it to do, you know, something else in that category. Um, and Karen, if there are any questions that we want to tackle, let's, let's do that. If not, we're just going to kind of keep rolling here. You know, one of the other, um, and you yeah, can, we got questions. you have questions. Okay. Yeah. Well, should, we do, should we do a couple of questions? Yeah, let's do them. Okay. Um, First one, I mean, we're talking about personal care products. What about uh, toothpaste and deodorant? Oh yeah, those are really big, both really important to be clean. Um, you know, everyone has some differing opinions on fluoride, but I have stayed away for, I don't know, 25 years plus. So my, I've always, I always try different ones. My favorite is a new one um, by, it's called Wellness, and it has the hydroxyapatite in it, which is basically helps strengthen the enamel. Um, they use it in Japan a lot, but you know, there's a lot of things to look at the, the sodium lauryl sulfate. A lot of times they've removed that now and used a little cousin of that, another lauryl sulfate that people just don't recognize. So toothpaste is really big. Um, there's a handful of companies I use, but like I said, that's my favorite. And then deodorants, that's a huge one. Um, there are tons of natural ones. I have a list of kind of my favorite ones. But the biggest thing is, is where it's, you know, when you're talking about those kind of like micro doses of chemicals and things like that, plugging up the ducts and your nodes right under your arms, that's one of the biggest reasons I think in links for breast cancer. It's just right there. And people, when they have the antiperspirant, the aluminum goes in and blocks that. And so it's a really big deal. Um, there are, I, do they want names of ones? I have a handful of names, but basically- okay. You don't look for, you know, antiperspirants, not great. And um, the ones that are really good, there's Ursa Major. There's, um, I use a brand I love called All Good. They make um, deodorant, lotion, sunscreen, um, all kinds of things. And um, lip balm, safe lip balm. <laughs> and, um, but deodorant can be tricky. Another one, um, you know, people have been trying all these different ones. They're sort of like in a jar. I think it's a little bit difficult <laughs> to deal with. So, um, you know, there's primal pit paste, that's one. There's a whole bunch for guys, but you know, a lot of times with the natural deodorants, you kind of need to try different ones and see what works for you. It's really all about, again, kind of like the skin microbiome and it's the, you can do things intern internally. Liquid chlorophyll is one that's really great for kind of detoxing naturally. And again, it kind of comes back to, detoxing. If you're, you know, have more sweat that is fragrant, then it's time to detox a little bit more. I tell you what, I, and I want to, I want to add on that. And I, that was a very nice way of putting it. <laughs> it's, so, you know, the, the idea of deodorant too, like we, one, you know, we we're trying to inhibit something that's very, very natural for our body to eliminate, especially like the motors running, you wouldn't, you know, plug up your exhaust in your car. Like that's what our sweat glands are for to let the um, so we want to unplug them up. And the reality is, is that we should get ourselves to a place. We don't need a deodorant or an antiperspirant that it's, we should have a natural body odor that is relatively neutral. The pH isn't so off that we stink. Um, and if we do, it's a sign that we need to do something. And no doubt when more diet is not clean or this detox machine, isn't that detoxing that well, we're going to have more odor, no doubt about it. I can go on other odors that our body produces when we're not well, but it's really no different. It can come out of your mouth or another area, right? But if those odors aren't good, it literally just is an indicator of what's going on. And for us to like, I know it sounds so silly, but I, I think that the audience listening to this tonight will appreciate and say, you're right. like, yeah, like this is almost common sense. We shouldn't have to hide our normal fragrance that are in fragrance in the right word, but the normal like scent. Scent, yes, thank you, thank you. Scent that our body puts off. Um, so that I think that should be the goal that we move toward instead of saying, because listen, I've tried all those. I've tried every one of those rocks and stones and this, that, and the other. Nah, they don't work. Um, at least that, yeah. So you just got to get your body super, super clean. And sometimes you won't be, and then you stink, and then you got to get back to being clean. Real quickly on the toothpaste, there is something, I think it's called, I think it's called triclosan or triclosan. Yeah. Oh yeah. They put that in there. It's 
it, yeah, and that's the thing that's so that should banned in the um, Purell and all that junk. And that is a direct endocrine disruptor. Yeah. So, so to think how this all works is like, so we, in theory, brush our teeth, you know, at least every morning, every night. So think every single night you're putting a chemical into your body. If, you know, for most, I'm saying 99% of the toothpaste will have that product in it. And so we're putting something in our body that is a disruptor. Um, yeah, so there's a, there's a brand I don't, uh, I just literally just pulled it out of my bathroom before I got in here. Um, and I'm going to say this is probably a little better than middle of the road. And maybe you're familiar with this, Dr. Ashley. You ever seen this one? This is a toothpaste. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's good. And it's, um, it's got a little bit of like a, a probiotic action to it. So it's, there's, there are some really, really good options. That's the beauty about today is that no different than like 10 years ago when we we're trying to do this or trying to get someone to go gluten free. It was brutal. It was hard. Mm -hmm. But now it's so simple. There's so many options, but we have to be willing to get outside the box and look around a little bit. So, all right, awesome questions. Karen, you got any more over there? Yeah, it's just a couple more. Um, so Ashley here writes, I use Rodin and Fields. I've tried virtually every single other brand and it's the only company that helps with my adult acne. How much though should I stress over this when I'm otherwise healthy, pretty clean eater and a yoga teacher? However, I'm trying to get pregnant. So this is on my mind. I would switch like for the people who you sorry can I say names or no of some companies so people who use oh, Argon, please are you talking about the names of brands of products that I would switch to and then I can tell you the, the switch but you know people there's a lot of companies that appear to be clean like Arbonne I don't think Rodan and Fields claims to be clean because they're not um but they have lines that people use for anti-aging and acne but you know, this is something that I do spend a lot of time with my clients on is this kind of preconception detox. If you know that you're gonna have a child anytime soon, you really need to clean up your skincare um, prior to having the child. That's the thing. When you're pregnant, basically too, the fetus will absorb the toxins that are, you know, that you're in contact with as a defense mechanism to save the mom. So you're basically that fetus gets a, a, I don't know if I'd say like a, a bigger hit of the chemicals, but basically it's protective against the mom. And so it's really, really important. You know, a lot of times people clean up their diet and sorry, their skincare as a, as a new mom and put that on the baby, but they kind of forget about the whole pregnancy part. And then again, that year, especially leading up to that is really, really crucial. So if someone can, you know, systemically detox, um, it would be great to switch over and see why you actually have acne because there's some reason that skincare is just covering it up. It doesn't mean that it's fixing your problem and, and why that's there. You know, and yeah. I think on that topic, Karen, let me just real quickly with the, with the acne, um, yeah. Accutane. Um, Gosh. Yeah, you know, listen, folks, I get that it clears up our skin a little bit here and there, but we're talking about a, uh, a chemical that will literally downregulate the way your detox machine runs, your liver, your gut health, um, pretty significant. And because that's so, so popular, uh, and that's the wrong word, but it is, uh, Dr. Ashley, you, you, anything to say about Accutane? I mean, that it's, I would uh, avoid it at all costs if possible. Also, because if there's some medication that you take that you can't have a child or get pregnant on, it's very toxic. So that's one of them. And you have to be, you know, again, that it's, you're never really getting to the root cause. So then you're basically pushing that up down the road. And to me, I think it's just going to turn into something more difficult to address later on. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Um, Okay, Kathleen on Facebook has asked, what about double walled stainless steel containers? Are they as safe as glass? I think so. I mean, I think the stainless steel and glass are our best options. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, Nancy here asks, what do you think of gain with essential oil options? I'm not sure, what, do you know what gain? Ga oh, gain detergent? Is that, they have essential oil in that now? <laughs> okay, so there's the quality issue with essential oils too. A lot of times, you know, the you can create synthetic oils and probably it's only denoted on the way it looks on the label to see if it's actual or if it's the chemical constituent that they've recreated. So I would say no, any big brand that um, has now is now touting using something natural or an essential oil, I wouldn't trust it and the quality is going to be 
contaminated in my opinion or tainted. It's just not, you know, essential oils, their contamination, that's one of the most contaminated products out there. So basically what that means is people will synthesize something to make it appear like it's an oil and it's not, so. And also just because it adds in essential oils doesn't mean we're taking out. The yeah, it doesn't mean that it's reduced the other chemicals. Yeah, okay. Um, when we were talking about nat um, deodorant, has anybody tried native deodorant? Which one? Native. I oh, actually oh yeah, so native, native is one I recommend. And then I forgot also the Agent Natur. That one's really good too. What, what is that one? Agent Natur. Natur. Um, fancier one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, awesome. Um, okay, a couple more quickly. Uh, what about spring water in plastic bottles? You talked a bit about plastics. You, you know, you, yeah, take everything out of plastics. What about buying when you go and buy spring water? I, yeah, I, I don't suggest it. I mean, I've, I, any water in a plastic bottle is a last resort to me if I'm, you know, dying of thirst or, you know, need some water. But, you know, we, I have some for emergencies, for earthquakes and things like that. But I, you know, people get in that habit and they just keep it in the garage. They pick up a bottle. And I think that's one of the, the most important things to switch, you know, get a really amazing filter at home and use that. And again, the impact on the environment alone is huge, not even of what you're doing. I mean, you're basically consuming some of those plastic chemicals and that's one of the worst things that I think you could be doing for your health and people do it on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, for sure. Um, we've got another question from Kim. She's a redhead. Uh, do you know anything about it being documented that redheads absorb more chemicals that they put on their skin? I don't, but that's an interesting you know, uh, correlation. It would be interesting sort of genetically, it would be cool to see the toxin test to see what they do, or I would say it's probably some sort of genetic, not mutation, it's not the right word, but um, abnormality or adaptation, maybe for the pigment of the skin. Yeah, and I think what you said was interesting. Really, there are, genetically, we're all a little bit different to how sensitive we are to different different chemicals, yeah. right? Like we're all, yeah, we're all just a little bit different. Okay, last question here. Um, what are some good essential oil brands? What do you use? Me? Okay. So there's, you know, there's typical ones that people use that are familiar with, with um, like Young Living and doTERRA. I use True Vibrance oils. Those are really nice. I use Mountain Rose Organics. Those are um, all certified organic, which is something that I do like to look for. And, and then another big brand I use is called Snow Lotus. And those are line based on Chinese medicine. So you know, I, the biggest thing is to look for really great quality and, and utilize those. Cause again, this is, a, it's a really big industry that's often adulterated with uh, just fake and synthetic oils. And it's really common. Awesome. I think that's, uh, that's true. It, it can get hard. There are lots of brands out there that, that as you were talking about with greenwashing, they look like they're going to be a good one, but once you, once you turn around and dive in a little bit deeper, you see that. And that's, that they're not going to be, um, oh, yeah. I say too, they're, they're concentrated. So that, you know, if you're not getting something that's not organic and it's just a citrus oil and you're consuming, you know, that's the peel and the rind, it's, you want that organic. You don't want all of those pesticides concentrated in that tiny little bottle. It's just, then you're really um, making a big difference with the chemicals I think you're putting on your skin and then you're putting it directly on your skin. So it's going straight in. Yeah, awesome. Um, okay, also, I think you had some skin recipes. You got a bit of a freebie for people. Um, whereabouts can they get that? And, and tell us a little bit about that. Uh, yes, yeah, so a lot of the skincare line that, um, that I had before, we did a lot of products where basically we also taught people how to make things themselves at home because I think that that's really important. You can do a lot with some simple ingredients. So yeah, we have that download. And then again, I can include also all of my favorite brands too. I think I can share that. Okay, awesome. And we've added the link in the chat here for people to be able to download that. 
um, those recipes and we put them in Facebook too. So thank you so much for that. Well, I'm, I'm going to check them out. I've, I've definitely, you know, it, we were talking about some people know and then they keep using it. I think keep getting this information is out there because even for me, there's some things that I still need to swap out. You know, I'm good with lots of things, but there's, there's more that I could continue to swap out or I say, oh, you know, I, I'm not going to worry about that one right now. And the more you hear it, I think the more you kind of dive in as well about what this is, no, what this is actually doing to our body. Each time I hear it, I'm like, oh, you know, I've got to, I've got to keep up leveling that myself. So I'm sure a lot of our listeners have been able to get a ton of value from that and be able to say, hey, actually some of these things I was, I was kind of, oh, should I swap that out? Hopefully they'll be able to have some suggestions now on how to swap that out. And it's important when you are swapping things, you know, I often tell people it's very, it's less common. You would just do like a full swoop um, and get rid of everything. But, you know, think of the things you put on the biggest surface of your body first. So if you wear lotion or, you know, cream, things like that, your shampoo and shampoo, especially. Um, and then again, if you're someone that wears basically just lipstick or for people who wear foundation, all of those things switch first, then you can go to, you know, the things that you use less of and on just smaller surface area. Love that. I think it's a good, uh, yeah, good suggestion on how to phase them in for sure. <laughs> Any you know, last thoughts, Bart, or should we move into our final question? A little while, but, you know, I think, um, you know, as we go, and especially for people out there that have found themselves super sensitive to chemicals, you, someone walks by you and like they have a certain perfume and it just drives you crazy. Um, know that that is the compounding effect we're talking about. Th that took time over and over and over again for those chemicals to build up. And then it's just one, it's just that straw that breaks the camel's back. The good news is, is that with the right strategies, you can clean this stuff back out and you can upregulate how your body handles toxins. And, you know, you just little bit by little bit and getting them out of the way in the beginning is an awesome first step. So you do that and then you can become that detox machine. You know, the, it's the beauty is that there's so many ways to do it now. So many practitioners like Dr. Ashley and myself that can help you navigate that road. So if you know that's going on with your body, just choose to kind of dive in and then, you know, tackle all those things. So Dr. Ash, we got we have one more question for you tonight. Um, okay. Karen will give you this one. And I want to, yeah. So Karen, why don't you fire away? Then I'll close up in just a moment here. Yeah, look, Dr. Ashley, we love to make health simple on this show. So what is one action that our listeners can take away from all this awesome information uh, that they can take right away to continue to head towards their goal of becoming superhuman? Okay, so I would say just learn if this, learn to be a label detective. Just start flipping it over, look at the back, start being a little bit familiar. You don't need to learn everything, but if you see a whole long list of things you've never heard of, look for a better alternative. Yeah, I love that. Thank you so much. That that uh, keeps it simple, and that I mean that's something that somebody you can can continue to grow their their knowledge on. Right, the more they flip it over, the more they're gonna continue it to take long yeah. to learn basics yeah yeah awesome well thank you so much again we so appreciate you being here and uh we will be back well we'll be back the same time next week for the dog food episode so that's going to be pretty exciting dr ashley thank you so much for uh coming and join us tonight and shedding life for all the all the peeps here that are following us and uh and thanks for being a great practitioner you know, we uh, more and more people like you that are out there. You're, I know you're serving, helping thousands of people. So please keep doing your thing. Keep spreading love. Keep sharing things out that you're doing. Um, you know, the more warriors like yourself that we have, really the better this place is for us all to live in. So I appreciate you coming on tonight. We appreciate everything that you do. And then for all the peeps listening, of course, we're going to continue to level up, continue to take deliberate action for the mind, for your body, your overall wellness. And y'all be awesome. Thank you. You're welcome.